Is it possible for a sequence series to be converged itself, but when you square, when you cube each term, and then you make up this new series, then it's divergent. Then it's divergent. So here's the thought process. So first thing we recognize that it cannot be a positive series, right? Meaning, in this series, it's impossible for every term to be positive, or、uh, Maybe have finitely many negative terms, but the rest of the terms are all positive. It's impossible because if we just get rid of the finitely many negative terms, it should not impact the divergence or convergence of the series, right? So now we can just, without loss of generality, we can just assume that there are all positive terms in this series. Now, if let's say every term is positive, what's going to happen, right? So, given that this series is、uh, convergent, then we can immediately conclude that that. So, if every term is positive, and if this is this is convergent, then then I immedi immediately draw the conclusion that the limit of A n general term has to be zero. Right, that's a minimum requirement. Right, no matter, no matter if it's a positive series or alternating series. Right, I can always draw this conclusion. So in that case, I want to look at this general term. Right, limit n approaches infinity of of A n. Cube over a n.、Right. That is equal to a n square, right? So we have this comparison test, which says、uh, if we divide the new the general term of the new sequence series by the、uh, general term of the old sequence series, right? If the result still is approaching zero, right? Is it? Is it is it zero? <coughs> yes. Now, if it's zero, then we can draw the conclusion that the、uh, new series has to be convergent as well. A comparison test. Now, so, of course, assuming it's a positive. Uh, positive series, right? So the which so that tells us that it's impossible to a positive to be a positive series. Now, is it possible to be a negative series? Right, meaning every term in here is negative, or there is at most finitely many positive terms, and the rest is all negative terms. Right, for the same reason, it's also impossible. Also impossible. Right, so first of all, this is is impossible, right? Then if every term is negative, then it's also impossible. Now, the only possibility left is that maybe it is a alternating series, right? Here's the here's the thought pro here's the motivation.、Right? Could it be a alternating series? Or could it be a generalized alternating series? First, let's assume that if it's an alternating series, what, what's going to happen? Right, al alternating. Right, what's going to happen now is that if we can take any example, let's say, let's say one minus. The cubic root of two, right, plus the cubic root of three, right, and then so on and so forth. Alternating series, or that's the old series, right? It's definitely convergent, right? Convergent because Leibniz test, right? Leibniz test tells us that as long as the absolute value of each each term is right, is、uh, monotonically 
decreasing. I right, suppose this is the old series. Now the new series should look like this. Right, so it's a cube each term. Should look like one minus half plus one third, so on and so forth. So our new series is in fact an a, a typical alternating series, right? So it's a little bit different than the uh, harmonic series, right? Where you have minus plus minus plus. Right? That's the difference. Of course, it's convergent. Cannot be divergent, right? So this is impossible. In general, if we have any any alternating alternating uh, series where each term's absolute value is monotonically decreasing, approaching to zero, right? Then we can always come up with a new series where it's also always also convergent. Right, so it looks like this is also impossible. Impossible. Right, unless unless we have a generalized alternating series where because remember the very reason that preventing that's preventing our new series to be divergent right, is, is because that each term the absolute value is monotonically decreasing approaching zero right so that motivates us to uh, tweak this alternating series a little bit right maybe we can make it not monotonically decreasing maybe that will satisfy this result. Right, that's the motivation. So how about this? How about we make a little bit change right, to this old series? Let, let's make it perhaps right, instead of uh, monotonically, monotonically decreasing, may, maybe I can just say okay, 1 minus 1 over 2 times the cubic root of 2 minus the same thing. 1 over 2 times the cubic root of 2 then plus 1 over the cubic root of 2 okay. then I'm gonna minus 1 over 3 times the cubic root of 3 minus 1 over 3 times the cubic root of 3 same thing then it's the same thing right 3 times the cubic root of 3 so this term, this term, this term, they are all identical, right? Then I'm going to plus 1 over the cubic root of 3. You see the pattern, right? So every time it just here. So in the end, in general, I should have minus 1 over n times the cubic root of n minus all the way 1 over n times the cubic root of n Right, so if it's 3 in front, I have 3 terms. So if it's n, I have exactly n terms in here. Then I'm going to plus 1 over the cubic root of n. That's the same thing. So that way the pattern is clear. This is our old series, right? So you can see these two terms just cancel out with this term, right? So these three terms happens to be the opposite of this term, right? They just cancel out. So in general, we can easily see that, except for the first term, right? Every other term will just basically all just cancel out each other, right? So this limit should be equal to one. This is con convergent, right? Convergent to one. In fact, we can uh, look at any general finite sum. Right, we don't have to go all the way because I'm supposed to go all the way to forever. But right now, let's just look at finite sum. Maybe let's just cut it here, right? Or cut cut it here, right? Just I just don't have to look at the remaining. I just need to cut it here. Right? This is my finite sum, right? Finite sum up to here, finite sum. So then is this finite sum after I? After I subtract 1 from this finite sum, is this finite sum approaching uh, 0 when n is big enough? Right? If I just subtract 1 out of here, right? then I should have this term, this term, cancel out with this term. Right? This term, this term, this term, cancel out with this term. 
So before this term, I have just zero, right? So can this term be close enough to zero when n is big enough? Of course, obviously, right? Even if I look at up to here, finite sum, finite sum from here up to here, right? Can this term plus, minus this term minus this term, can they, can the, their sum be close enough to zero? Right, because pr remember previously I just subtract one, right, subtract one. Then every term is just canceled out, right, up to here, right? So can they add up to be small enough? Of course, right, even if I just, right, because I have n many terms, right, n times this, n many of them, I still have one over cubic root of n can be sm still close enough to zero when n is big enough. So this is obvious, right, this limit is obvious. So now our old series really approaches one, really is convergent. All I need to show is that our new series is divergent after I cube each term. Right, so now my new series should look like this. So what, cube this term, what do I have? Right, this become two, cube, this becomes two. Right. Two cube times two, minus the same thing. Two cube times two, right? Plus, this time I should have just one over two, right? Uh, minus one over three cube times three, right? Minus the same thing, the same thing, right? Then plus one over three, right? So what's the pattern here? Pattern is that one over n cube times n, right? Same thing, same thing until the same thing, right? I have n many of them. Last I have one over n, right? Go on forever. If I just look at the finite sum, finite sum, right? Just maybe just stop here. All right, what do I have? Now let, let's look at its finite sum, or maybe just the subsequence of the finite sum as a sequence. All right, let's just focus on this term, this term, this term, and this term, right? So, like I said, one plus half plus one third plus all the way one over n, right? Harmonic series, like right, this. Then I'm, I'm gonna focus on this, this, negative terms, right? How about these two negative terms? Right? They are identical, right? Then twice, so two times this term, right? Two and this two cancel out. I just have one over two cube, right? And three of them identical, right? Three times this term, right? Three and this three canceled out. I have one over three cube. And in general, in general, I have one over n cube, right? This is a perhaps just a subsequence in terms of of the finite sum as a sequence, right? If this is already divergent, then the uh, then the this right new series has to be divergent, right? Is it divergent? Of course. First of all, harmonic series obviously approaching to, uh, diverges to positive infinity. And this, this is even, even simpler. This is just a, uh, in general term in such form. One over n to the power of p. All right, so as long as uh, this well-known sequence series, as long as p is strictly bigger than one, then it has to be convergent. Right? So this is convergent, this is divergent. Overall, it's divergent. Right, so really, we found an example where 
the old series is convergent. And the new series, after we cube each general term, our new series is divergent.